Hi, I'm Allie and welcome to my channel. In this episode of Rental Redesign, we are tackling my entryway. I'm so excited about this makeover. I have been planning it for way too long and now we're finally going to put it into action. Here is what we're starting with. This is my entryway as it is right now. Very simple, minimal decor, tiny little coat rack that I made for my previous apartment. And I know that I have a couple renter friendly hacks to transform this into something that is way more on trend. And I don't want to keep talking right here. Let's get right into this makeover. It's DIY day of the entryway makeover and I have a lot of decisions to make. I just picked out all of these paint samples and I have to choose which one I wanna do for the wall right here. Now looking at this, I immediately know there are some that I want to take away. This one is definitely too dark. This area does not get a whole lot of light. I thought maybe I'd want more of a teal type of green, but mm, also considered a grayish green or a sage green, but I'm really just feeling these blue tones. I will take away this one as well. Okay, maybe this one too. <laughs> now that I'm left with is Riverway, Slate Tile, Restorative, and Aquamarine as the four colors that I am leaning toward for this project. I have a plan to do a very renter friendly way to add color to the wall that doesn't require any painting of the wall because I'm not allowed to paint in my apartment. We're gonna have to go to Lowe's and pick out some of those supplies, but before we do that, I wanna know in the comments which of these four colors do you think I should choose for this wall? And we'll see if you're right a little bit later on after we go shopping. I am back from Lowe's. I have my bag of supplies right here. So let's get DIYing. Let's start with the coat rack build. So I picked up this um, one by six by four foot piece of wood here. This is going to be the backing of the coat rack. And the best place to start with this, just because it's going to be kind of awkward shaped, is by adding the hanging hardware first. So I picked up these keyhole fasteners. I'm gonna clear out a little bit of the wood on the back of this, and screw those into place, and then we can focus on the real build of this project. I wanted to add a small shelf to the top of this coat rack that we're building. So I picked up this one by two by four foot board. That's gonna sit right on top of this coat rack here. And you'll notice that it is going to then take up some of the space on the board here. It's three quarters of an inch. So finding the middle of where to put the coat hooks, I had to do a little bit of math and I already marked it here on my speed square. I am putting the center line at three and one eighth all the way down the board. Now to make this coat rack a coat rack, you're gonna need something to hang your coats on. And I picked up some packs of these shaker pegs. These are more popular right now in current design trends. I'm seeing them in entryways, kitchens, things like that. One of my least favorite parts when you purchase hardware is that they don't tell you measurements or instructions. And so I have these pegs, not sure what the size is in order to add this to the board. Well, I mean, I could probably Google it, but anyway, I have this little tool here that my dad gave me to draw some circles when I was a kid. I've held on to it ever since, only to find out now that I do DIY projects that it is a drill gauge. And so I was able to figure out that the peg fits right here at the end, which means I need to use a half inch drill bit to install these. And once I had the holes for the pegs drilled, I then used some wood glue to attach that shelf board and held it in place until it dried with some clamps. I do wanna add a little extra security, and to do that, I think I need to bring in the big guns. <laughs> With 
the entire coat rack built, I gave it a coat of primer. For the beadboard wall portion, I want to take advice that I got from you guys back when I put up this board in batten wall, which was to paint the boards before installing them. Well, we're going to paint this beadboard first before we install it. And you know, before we headed to the hardware store, I asked you what color I should pick. And here is the one that I got. I'm going to reveal the color right now. The color that I went with is restorative in eggshell finish. I, first impressions, am very excited about the color. It's a nice kind of bluish, slight tint of teal, but I love the gray tone that it has in it. So I think this is gonna look really good. And you guys are gonna have to forgive me because I forgot to buy a paint pan. So I stuck a lid in an old Amazon packaging. And I hope that this is gonna work well enough to get me through this because I can't believe I forgot one of the most crucial items you need when you're painting. <laughs> Since this beadboard already is pre-primed when you buy it, I'm just applying the paint right onto it. And I am first filling in the grooves of the beadboard with a paintbrush and then rolling it nice and smooth with a roller. Now, because I am using a dark color and starting from a white background, it did take me three coats to completely cover this section of the wall. So it took a little bit of time because I had to let it all dry in between, but the coverage on this paint was amazing. And I love the nice blue tone and eggshell finish. I was so excited to get it up on the wall. If renter-friendly makeovers, hacks, and DIYs are for you, then make sure you give this video a like. It is the best way to help out my channel, to see it grow and push this video to more people. And if you're loving what you're seeing here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you can follow along on this DIY renter-friendly journey here on Actually Alley. It's a new day and I just removed all of the coat rack decor that used to be behind me because it's time to install some removable wallpaper. Not only do I want to do the beadboard, I want to do something to add a little bit of character. So I went with this wallpaper that I got off of Amazon. I really liked the floral pattern that it had as well as how it complemented the gray walls in my apartment. So it would flow more seamlessly as an accent wall and allow that beadboard and that nice blue color to shine. I already had cut down all of the pieces, matched up the pattern, and now I get to attempt the part that I am nervous to do, which is installing this on the wall behind me. It's not my first time installing removable wallpaper. I've done it once in my kitchen, but I have not done it on an actual larger wall area. So let's tackle this and see how it goes. <laughs> huh, this is gonna be challenging, isn't it? This is gonna be really challenging. Why does that not want to go on straight? How did I get it? And then I lost it. Right there. I just had it. I guess that's what I do, right? I kind of work like this. The wallpaper is up and I am so happy with how it turned out. I thought it was gonna be a little bit harder than it was, but once I figured out the technique and had a second set of hands to help me out, I was able to get this up in a pretty short time frame. Now, obviously we have the wallpaper behind me here and this is blank. So that means it's time to bring in that beadboard that we have painted, it is all dry. And I'm simply going to hang it up on the wall using the Velcro or the picture hanging command strips. 
I am putting some hot glue on the side of the command strip that is adhering to the back of the beadboard. This is to add some extra security because sometimes I find that the command strip adhesive doesn't stick well to MDF type of material. So this is just a little extra security to put this up on the wall and make sure that it stays there long term. Wow, that's level. I knew that the four foot wide board here was a little bit too small for my space, so I also painted up a small piece of half inch trim and used a couple more command strips. I just cut one of the Velcro ones in half and attached that to fill in the gap. And then it was time to hang the coat rack, which I am trying out that painter's tape trick where you stretch it across the back of the thing that you're hanging, you mark the holes where you need to drill, then simply all you have to do is take your tape, put it up on the wall, make sure it's level, drill your holes, and add the drywall anchors and screws. And now the moment of truth, let's see if we can get this coat rack hung up and I hope, fingers crossed, that the screws were placed in the proper position. <laughs> it's probably not gonna be easy. What side do you think I should start with? I don't think they're right. I think I made a little mistake with the measurements for this coat rack and where it was placed, but I have a couple ideas to hide that in the decor stage. We're on to day three of this little entryway makeover, and it's my favorite part of the entire thing, which is getting up the decor and finishing touches. Now, the first thing is the centerpiece of this entryway, and I want to hang a mirror right here. Now, the little tape hack for hanging the coat rack was not the best solution, but I think it's going to work for this mirror. So let's see if I have a little better luck this time getting the mirror installed on the wall. Ready to put some holes in the wall? <laughs> something about that really ugly renter grade light fixture in the space. So let's DIY one. Now I plan to make a full tutorial of this process, but I'm using some cane webbing, cutting it down to the size that I want, and then using some iron on veneer strip to create the little edge banding, I guess, that goes around the entire light fixture. I made it to the circumference that I liked, secured it all with hot glue, added in these tiny little hooks, and then screwed some hooks into the ceiling, and all I had to do was pop that lampshade up around the existing light. No need to change wiring or swap anything out. This is such an easy renter hack. If you remember that little gap in the wall that I showed a bit earlier where the coat rack wasn't quite lined up, my solution for at least right now is to place this little house plant, this little faux plant, to hide that gap. However, if you have any ideas or other suggestions for how I can kind of fix this mistake without moving the drywall anchors, let me know in the comments. So that photo that you saw me place on the wall, I actually took it using this film camera and it's something that I've been enjoying as an extra hobby with my DIYing. And since I believe in putting more sentimental objects in your home decor, I thought why not place this right here on the shelf like it's ready to go for my next film shoot. I decided to replace the rug already in the space with this accent rug from Target. A super renter friendly hack is to swap out your knobs. So I decided to do that on the closet door to this cute knob that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. And then it was time to add the final touches. All of the final touches are in place. Now we're to the best part as always in this video, which is the final reveal. So I'm gonna show you that in three, two, 
one. In the comments, I want to know what you think of this makeover. How did I do transforming this space? I'm absolutely in love with how it turned out. I think the wallpaper, the beadboard, all work so well together. And overall, I'm just so excited with this space. It's welcoming when you walk into my apartment now. And now that the entryway is done, since it is connected right here to my living room, that means it's time for me to work on my living room makeover. You're definitely going to not want to miss that. That will be coming out sometime soon. So make sure you subscribe, turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any time I post. Thanks so much for watching this video. Stay crafty and I'll see you next time. Bye.